What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at properties of nth roots. So here's some formulas we're going to need, and let's get started. So for this first question here, we're going to use the fifth property, and this is just going to be absolute value of x. Now, if you do this a different way, some people might fall into this trap here and just call this x to the 4 over 4, which is going to be equal to x to the first. Now, the problem with this as to why we're not going to write our answer this way is because that it's hiding some of our solutions. What I mean by that is let's say x were to equal something like negative 3. We'll notice that if we use this correct definition here, that we have the fourth root of x to the fourth, we're going to have the fourth root of negative 3 to the fourth. And this is actually going to be equal to the fourth root of 81. And this is going to work out to positive 3. But notice that x equals negative 3 that we started with is not quite there. So how do we come up with an equation that maps us from the left side to the right side? That's why we need the absolute value. Because you can see here that x equals negative 3 gives us the fourth root of negative 3 to the fourth power. And according to what we wrote, this is equal to the absolute value of negative 3, which is positive 3. So that's why I don't just say the fourth root of x to the fourth equals x. That absolute value component here is absolutely essential. Now for the second question here, we could use the first property and we could split this up as the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of x to the eighth power. And when we look at this, the fourth root of 16, that's just equal to two. Now for the second piece here, what I'm thinking of is I, and I am gonna use that power over root idea that this is x to the eight over four, and that's gonna simplify to x to the second power. But you might be asking here, if we write our final answer out, why don't we have absolute value involved this time? Well, if you think about this, let's say I were to say that the answer was absolute value of x squared. The way I know which one it's gonna be is I ask myself if this absolute value is making a difference in the expression. But one thing I note is that x squared itself on its own is always greater than or equal to zero for all x. And then ask yourself, what happens when you take the absolute value of something that's greater than or equal to zero, the absolute value just drops. So just know as a side note, the absolute value of x squared, we could just write as x squared because x squared is greater than or equal to zero for all x. Now for this third question here, we wanna find the fifth root of x to the 10. And this time around, once again, we don't need the absolute value. And one way I could see that is that our index is odd. So this we could just say is x to the 10 over five, which is equal to x squared. But once again, if we were to throw on the absolute value, the absolute value of x squared is just x squared. So here's our simplified answer. For the fourth question here, we're gonna split this into two radicals. We could write this as the cube root of x to the third times the cube root of y to the sixth power. And this one here, the cube root of x to the third, notice this is the fourth situation here. When we take the odd root of a variable a to an odd power, we're just gonna get a, no absolute value required. So we work this one out here, this is just gonna be equal to x times, and this, if we were to work it out, is y to the six over three, which simplifies to y to the second. So this is gonna be x y squared. Now, why we don't need an absolute value for this component here is because cube roots, you can have negatives come out from a cube root radical. So we just have to be extra, extra careful here when we have an even index in front of our radical. So for question five, I would break this up into three separate radicals. We could call this the sixth root of 64 times the sixth root of x to the sixth power times, and we have the sixth root of y to the seven. But y to the seven, I'm gonna write a little bit different. I'm gonna write it as y to the six times y to the first. And the reason why I'm doing this is that we're gonna simplify this a little bit more. The sixth root of 64 is equal to two. This situation here, notice we have an even index and we have x to the even power matching. So this is the fifth property here. So this is gonna work out to absolute value of x like this. And then for this one, I'm gonna break this into two separate radicals that this is gonna to split to the sixth root of y to the six times the sixth root of y like this. And once again, we're gonna use property five because we have an even index. We have y to the power six, which is also even here. So this in the next line is gonna to simplify to, we're gonna have two times absolute value x times absolute value y times the sixth root of y. And if we wanna combine this into a single absolute value, we could write our final answer as two times absolute value xy times the sixth root of y, and here's our final answer to question five. Now, one thing to point out here is that this question is only gonna work out if y is greater than or equal to zero, because if you look at the final answer or the original, that if you were to plug in a negative number for y, you can't take the sixth root of a negative number. So we could leave our final answer like this, but just to point out that this expression would not work out if y 
where some number less than zero. For question six, I would set up three different cube roots. I would call this the cube root of, we have the constant 64, and then I would throw the x's in the next cube root. We would have x squared times x to the fourth, and then in the last cube root, we would have y times y. And now if we work this out, the cube root of 64 is equal to four, and then we would have the cube root of x to the sixth power, and then we would have the cube root of y squared like this. So now, to work this part out, we're going to have four times the cube root of x to the six. If we just think of that as x to the six over three, that's going to work out to x squared. And then that final part here, we're going to have just the cube root of y squared. This part here, we're not going to simplify because the index on the outside is greater than the power of y on the inside. So this is as far as we could go. So question seven is our final question, and we have multiple radicals going on. So we're going to go with property three here. And this, if there's no number in front of your radical, it's a square root, and the invisible number there is two. So this we could set equal to, we're going to have a single radical, and we're just going to multiply these two. Three times two is going to give us six. So we have the sixth root of 64 times x to the sixth power. And this we could separate into two radicals. We have the sixth root of 64 times the sixth root of x to the sixth. Well, the sixth root of 64, that's just equal to two. And then the sixth root of x to the sixth, notice this is a situation where the index and the power are the same, but they're both even. So this is the fifth property, and this is gonna work out to absolute value of x. So this is our final expression here. 